Thank you so much for watching this video where we're going to talk about one of the fastest growing and biggest trends in North American tourism history, multi-generational travel. And over the next 45 minutes or so, we're going to tell you how to tap into this hottest trend travel and why we should even care. So let's just set the groundwork. First of all, by 2020, there will be 90 million grandparents in the United States and Canada alone. And by the way, this even stretches into Western Europe and they are bringing their kids and grandkids into the United States. And 90 million grandparents is nearly 25% of the entire United States and Canadian population. That is one in four adults. And by the way, grandparents are now making times with the grandkids a top priority, including local sporting events, music recitals, dance recitals, because boomers have kind of a guilt complex. So we weren't there for our kids. Maybe our careers got in the way, but by gosh, we're going to be there for the grandkids. And so when grandparents travel, how are they doing it? Most of the time, well, three out of 10, a third of the time, it's the grandparents and the grandkids. But 80% of the time, it's grandparents, kids, and grandchildren. And you may say, well, gee, this doesn't quite add up to 100% because sometimes they'll take a trip with just the grandkids and other times they'll take a trip with all three generations. You know, next thing you need to know is that nearly half of all leisure travelers have taken at least one multi-generational trip in 2013, and that is growing every year in 2014, 15, and 16. 40%, that's nearly half. And out of that group, grandparents travel 25% more than the average leisure traveler. And so, as a matter of fact, just in 2014, 34 million multi-generational trips were taken just in the United States and Canada. 34 million times. That's incredible. And look at what Forbes said. Multi-generational family travel tops the list of travel trends. Rounding out the list are river cruising, active or adventure trips, safaris, distant family connections, which is really about studying our roots, and celebration travel, whether it's high school graduations or marriages or, or even grade school graduations or just about anything to celebrate birthdays, Mother's Day, Father's Day. You know, and travel agencies are now tailoring tourism to the needs of families traveling with younger and older relatives. I mean, this is big. So why should you do this? Look at this. No traveling unit spends more and stays longer than multi-generational travelers. None. None. So they'll go to a destination for a week or 10 days or three or four days where the normal travel unit will stay for a day or two. That is why you should do this. And by the way, there is no group that spreads the word faster and further via social media and word of mouth, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, pin boards. I mean, it is unbelievable how big multi-generational travel is going to be. And so the next thing we should figure out is, well, who the heck is planning these trips anyway, now that we know we want to get into it? And so what generally happens is grandparents and their kids will pick the destination, whether it's a rural community, whether it's a farm trip, whether it's Disney, you name it, they will pick the primary destination and primary activities. But from there, what happens is one person tends to do the planning. It is typically either the grandparent and catering specifically to grandmothers in particular, remember women make 70% of travel choices. And so most of the time it's the grandmother and she will do it most often with the daughter or the daughter-in-law. And so it's usually one person does the bulk of the work and then will bounce it off the child. The children don't, the grandkids don't even hear about it till way down the road. And so what are they looking for? Well, number one, they love theme parks. And by the way, it doesn't have to be Disney. It can be local water parks. Wisconsin Dells, the water park capital of the world. 
uh, two towns of about 5,000 people have 18 water parks there. And that's a, so it doesn't always have to be as big as Disney, although Wisconsin Dells is a popular destination. You know, national parks are huge because they're educational. And then high but safe adventure like zip lining or rafting trips that three generations can go on, fishing trips, cruises, even home rentals and adventure destinations. And I'm going to show you an example of that coming up. And by the way, there's another new trend that's coming up called Pank. And you're going, what the heck is Pank? Those are professional ants with no kids. Believe it or not, this is a group of people that are creating another whole multi-generational travel category. And those are generally single career women that spend billions traveling with their nieces and nephews. And so now we know why it's important. It's huge and growing. We know who's planning these trips, basically the grandparents, the grandmothers, and their daughters or daughters-in-laws. And next, who's footing the bill? Well, <laughs> can you guess? As a grandparent, I can tell you who's footing the bill. And uh, you know, that, you're right. And you can tell how simply thrilled they are about it. <laughs> and so it's really important. However, now, one thing that's really important to understand about this, there's been a study called The Portrait of the American Traveler, and of course this holds true in Canada as well. Grandparents actually foot the bill 35% of the time. You know, sometimes parents footing the bill will be 25% of the time, and that usually depends on the economics of the grandparents. And then what's interesting is a mix is generally 40%. So more than anything, grandparents are really footing the bill. And I'll give you a good example. You know, a minute ago, I just talked to you about renting a house. I'll tell you that I have uh, three kids and uh, three little grandkids with my daughter, Claire, and son-in-law, David. But you know, what's really cool is every couple of years, we will go to Sun River, Oregon. This is a, a little resort community, and we will literally rent a vacation house. And we will, we will find the house. We will go down here and look at this. Here's different houses. There's one with four bedrooms, three and a half bathrooms. Here's one with five bedrooms, five and a half bathrooms. And so with us, we have three grandkids. Well, there'll be the two of us, their parents, so that's seven. But a lot of times we might bring a, another, uh, uh, you know, one of our, our son or our other daughters. We might have nine or 10 people. So a lot of times people will look for a house in a destination. Now, why do they do that? Because number one, they can fix their own meals. They have a little more luxury than hotels. This does not mean that hotels are out of the multi-generational game, but this just tells you another fast growing trend where people will go into areas like this and they will pick the home that they want. They will figure out how many bedrooms they want. And so what happens there, then once you decide and you pick your house, the next thing you do is figure out, well, when do we want to go there and what do we want to do? And you can see, look at this, look at how booked up it is. And already in August, September is totally full except for two days for this particular house. So the point is, is that home rentals are big and growing. So if you do have people that rent homes, usually that's 30 days or less, it's a, it's a great option for multi-generational travel. And so that's how that'll work. But sometimes, like in our case, if the home isn't quite big enough for all of us, we'll get a home for the kids and grandkids. And by the way, we're putting the bill and then we'll go stay in a nearby condo or resort. And just remember that grandparents sometimes need that space away from the kids and grandkids. So in this case, this is where the hotel comes in or a rental condominium, or just, you know, some other to give the kids their place, and then we can go and have our own time. So I want you to remember that. Keep that in the back of your mind. It's very, very important. And by the way, if you get into home rentals at all, or even condo rentals, you need to combine it with bikes, rafts, canoes, golf clubs, badminton, you name it, tennis rackets. And one of the reasons we like staying in Sun River, Oregon, is because almost every home you rent, they'll have a number of bikes in the garage, or they will have a couple of uh, canoes you can use, or they will have tennis rackets there. They make sure that the family that's renting the home has everything they need for a great 
time. And then once you do that, look at this. This is TripAdvisor. There's the Oregon Observatory, the Trail to Benham Falls. Look at the Polina Plunge where they're on rafts. You know, there's the golf resort. And so what happens is we'll look for, once we go through this, and we'll find, oh my gosh, look at what there is to do in Central Oregon. Look at what there is to do around Sun River. And you could see it in the winter, in the summer, and you start looking at all those things. And then we're sold now because there's a lot of activities that would cater very much to families with kids. And now let's rent a house. And so you could see that the grandparents are taking the lead. They're generally footing a lot of the bill. Um, and so that's really important. And so, who are we marketing to? You know, you might be thinking that we're marketing to grandparents, but guess what? You're wrong. So who is it? You gotta do your marketing to grandkids. Think like Disney. Their advertising is for kids, and then they go, Mom and Dad, we wanna go to Disneyland or Disney World. And so what I want you to do with all your marketing is if you can make it really kid-friendly, the grandparents are saying, oh my gosh, we should take the kids and grandkids to do that. And by the way, they're looking for experiences like this. But if you cater to the kids and you can show pictures, there's grandpa on the back of the canoe, photos like this, cater to the kids where they, the little boy there is doing fishing, the girl's helping steer the canoe. She also has her own fishing rod, so does grandpa. You know, these are the kinds of photos that work, but the focus is on the kids having a great time because grandparents and parents will follow. I mean, just make sure they're experienced like this. This is actually a polar bear diving down and underwater through looking through underwater glass uh, windows. This is a Point Defiance Zoo in Tacoma, Washington. Just looking at the website for Point Defiance Zoo, we thought, man, we live in Arizona, but our kids live in Seattle. Maybe we should come up to Seattle and take them out for a couple of days down to the Point Defiance Zoo, and then maybe over on a ferry to the uh, Kitsap Peninsula. But these are the things we're looking at what will cater to kids. And by the way, with multi-generational travel, you can't just get stuck on toddlers or zero to three. Look at, look at this, 23%, 28%, 39%, 45%. Look at this range. And so you can't just do one size fits all. And I'm going to talk more about that in a minute. So now, how do we market to these decision makers? Remember, the focus is on kids, but the decision makers are going to be the grandparents and the parents. And here is the key thing. Everything you market needs to be transformative. This can't just be like the old days where we just go to the beach. We want experiences that are transformative. So I'm going to give you the 10 things you need to do to market to this group, to these groups. And by the way, grandparents won't spend every minute of every day with the kids and grandkids. They want their downtime too. But the top thing is it must be transformative. It must be life-changing or aspirational. You know, and it needs to be memorable but something they will always remember. It doesn't have to be expensive. It does not have to be Disney, but it needs to be so good that we will pay a couple of thousand dollars to rent a house and then airline tickets or, or car rentals, and then we will do all these other things. Remember, these multi-generational trips are expensive. And so it absolutely has to fit in one of these categories. But it could be as simple as the water park we're talking about. It's about having a great time. You know, I love what Travel Channel said when they talked about multi-generational travel. Forget solo travel. The big trend is now, the big trend now is to bring the entire family along for an unforgettable adventure. Families are foregoing the family vacations of the past where quality time was spent parked at the beach and instead are looking for transformative experiences that the whole family can share. I mean, as a matter of fact, a new phrase has been coined, aspirational adventure. And so these events have to be big. 
it's the grandparents, the kids, and, and the grandkids, and we're out river rafting. You know, these are experiences that matter. And by the way, you can't steal that tagline that I have in quotes there because I borrowed that from Sarnia, Ontario, who does experience that matter as their brand promise. But that's what you have to think like. These are experiences that these kids will never forget and neither will their parents or the grandparents. And by the way, whatever it is your marketing needs to be worth at least a two hour drive. So the motivation, according to the Travel Channel, is unforgettable, transformative adventures. And by the way, learning is at the top of that list. Here you can see granddad showing a grandson how to tie knots or how to wrap ropes when they're out on a sailboat. So it's these kinds of things that include something they will learn. So they'll learn something. They may say, I love this. I mean, you're changing their lives. And so what do you need to do? You need to create customized itineraries, packages, and special deals. You know what? The all-inclusive is huge and it's growing. And so one thing you need to do about this is is customized itineraries are really important. And I'm gonna go into more detail here in a bit, but you know, packages have been talked about for ages in tourism and now they're more important than ever. And here's why, is because it takes so much to plan a trip that has the activities and places to stay for grandparents, and then you've got the kids and the grandkids. And just think right there, if you have, a, if you have a couple with three kids, that's five people. What about the transportation? You had the grandparents, now we're up to seven people. So what's the transportation like? Are we taking multiple cars? Are we meeting somewhere? If we meet at the airport or do we just all meet? I mean, it's hard to do this. So the easier you make it, the more likely you are to close sale. But I want you to do itineraries. And let me give you a website you can go to and it's called Road Scholar. They've got all of these. It says grandparent travel. What's more rewarding than cultivating your love of lifelong learning? Teaching a grandchild to love it too. Now, in this case, they're catering to the grandparent. And I said, you got to cater to the grandchildren. When you click on any one of these adventures, then they do tell you what's in it for the grandkids. So right now, this is geared to the um, grandparents and the parents. And so you can see, look, it says Kansas, intergenerational adventures in flight, aviation and space exploration. Look, there's Iceland, intergenerational Iceland, land of fire and ice. I mean, you could go through, look at it, Costa Rica. I mean, some of them are, there's Arizona and Utah, National Park Family Adventure. And so I want you to go to Road Scholar because they did a really great job. And look what they did. They did highlighted programs featured this month and find a program by location, by map, by interest, by activity level, by date, by category. Look at that little thing on the left side. Those are the kinds of things you need to do on your website. Find a program based on those things. And you can use those same criteria. And by the way, when you go to it, I just pulled up one. This is the Intergenerational Adventures in Flight in Kansas. And there's the overview. Notice they did it for grandchildren from 10 to 15 years of age. That's the other thing with your itineraries is you need to do it by age. And I'm going to talk more about that. But it, looked, it says, take off with your grandchild on a thrilling exploration of flight at the Kansas Cosmosphere and Space Center. Certified flight instructor briefs you on aerospace history, design and operation before taking you on flight lessons aboard a Cessna 172. So you're actually going on an airplane in this. And they tell you how these things work. How cool is that? And so you could go into more and more details. You know, and they even rate them. They have their customers that have taken these itineraries actually rate them 4.7, 4.8, 4.4. Most popular Canadian Explorer in Montreal, Quebec. And they do some 12 treks. Notice it's 12 nights. The next one down is five nights. The next one down is nine nights. You know, this is one thing where you can do multi-day kinds of trips. And so... You know, here's another one, Toronto Urban Adventures in Niagara's Magnificent Falls. And there it is. This one's intended for kids from 9 to 13 years of age. And by the way, you could mix and match them. You say, well, one day we're going to cater to the younger kids because we got different ages. And the next day we're going to do something that caters a little bit older. And so these are just examples for you to follow. And I think Road Scholar's done a good job. They're kind of ahead of the curve for sure.
So ITs might include river and lake cruises, uh, you know, rafting trips, uh, balloon rides, hot air balloon rides, Jeep tours, uh, fishing, wildlife safaris, uh, interactive science exhibits. And by the way, interactive is very, very key. Your local museum is generally not going to pull in multi-generational travelers. And, and no offense to that group, but we're looking for things that are really, really interactive. And so then, of course, celebration travel, birthdays, milestones, those kinds of things. And it needs to be exciting. It needs to be unusual. They need to be bucket list activities. You know, I was just looking at multi-generational trips and I saw that uh, in New Hampshire, the Fullerton party came. Look at grandparents, the son, the daughter, the grandkids. And this, by the way, was granddad's, I think it was his 80th birthday. So what did he do? He took the kids zip lining and the grandkids. I mean, how cool is that? And they post a little video on YouTube and I won't show you the whole thing, but it was a transformative experience. So what to do? You know, to start this, design an itinerary that would include you. If you've got young kids, think about what your parents would do, what you would want to do, and what your kids would want to do. Design some itineraries. Do it in your area. You know, what would you do? You know, and, and remember the grandkids are the focus, not the grandparent or the parent. And then you could have, so you develop your own itinerary and then have other people in your office or friends design other cool itineraries and then go through them. And here's what you can do. When you do your itinerary, ask yourself this question. If this was a four or five hour drive away, would you still do it? And that is a good way to tie a litmus test to what you're trying to do. And you can even personalize them. You could, put, here's itineraries from so-and-so in our office who is 32 years old and has two young kids and wants to do something with her folks. Or if you're older, say, well, here's one that I designed because I'm a grandparent and have want to bring my son and daughter-in-law and then I and they have three grandkids. So you can actually do personalized itineraries. And by the way, the next thing you need to do is make the pricing transparent. If you do not include the prices, then don't even bother because these are expensive trips and they don't want to dig and call toll-free numbers and then sit there with a calculator adding everything out. And by the way, that's why packaging is so important. And so back to, if I go back to Road Scholar, look at this. They said, okay, here's adult in one, uh, here's an adult and one child room um, doing this. And this included um, the lodging and everything. You know, we have two adults, one child, or two adults and two child. And so they give you the prices, but you need to include the prices. That way it makes it easy for people to plan. And by the way, always offer different lodging options because it's hard to believe, but grandparents often prefer to stay in separate lodging. That way, after dinner, they can go back, unwind, relax, they're empty nesters, and have a little bit of time to themselves. They might get up early the next morning, go for a walk or something quiet, and then they'll head over after breakfast and pick up the kids and grandkids. And by the way, this is huge. Look, this is Universal Studios. Multi-generational travel. Grandparents, parents, and grandchildren can play together and stay together. However, sometimes what they will do is create different lodging or levels of rooms so the grandparents have their own set of rooms and the grandkids are in a different section. So I just, you can look up. Um, Universal Studios, look at what Disney is doing. Look at what Universal Studios is doing. You could learn a lot from how they're doing it because they're already in the multi-generational game. So a great thing for you to do. And look at this fact. This is really important. The top 15% of lodging in terms of quality commands 85% of all leisure travel business. Boomers will pay more for quality, but so will the millennials who are often returned to as the entitled generation. And by the way, the thing you need to do next is create photo and video libraries. 
and always show parents and kids or even three generations. Gear them to the kids so it's fun for the kids to watch. So the kids go, I want to do that, mom, dad, grandpa, grandma, I want to go do that. But those grandparents will still be in there. So I want to show you a little video of what Disney is doing because you know what? They really set the gold standard in how to market things like multi-generational travel. Take a look at this. On the grand adventure, we can be as loud as we want. We don't act our age. We act our shoe size. And drivers come in all sizes. We battle the bad guys. And even each other. On the grand adventure, there's always double dessert. We fly elephants, make friends with monsters, and scream like babies. On the grand adventure, fairy dust is mandatory. So are matching hats. We're princesses, pirates, and explorers who wish upon stars and dream of doing it all again tomorrow. Now that is great. See, we're really selling the experience. You're selling the story. You're selling transformative experiences. So use words like adventures of a lifetime. Disney used grand adventures, captivating and memorable, an adventure they'll never forget. You know, do these kinds of things. You know, use these keywords that really, really are powerful in your marketing. And by the way, there's an entire video dedicated to words and phrases you should avoid. And if you're not part of our video library, it's $45 a month. We've got dozens of videos there that go into far more uh, details. For instance, there's videos on how to develop itineraries. There's videos on words and phrases to avoid and words and phrases to use in your marketing. There's videos on photography and, and video production. So I'm giving you the the, the shell for multi-generation travel, but we have all these videos that will tell you how to do every single element that you're seeing in this presentation. So now, the next thing I want you to do is provide bikes and other activities at lodging facilities. You know, I love it now because even places like Great Wolf Lodge is a hotel that has like a 45 to 50,000 square foot water park as part of the hotel. But, you know, I was in Astoria, Oregon at the Holiday Inn Express and they're, they have a trail that goes along the Columbia River and when you stay in the hotel, you can use the bikes. Kids bikes, teen bikes and adult bikes. So this is another thing you can do if, if you're working with lodging is to provide those bikes or provide ways for people to get out. It just adds to the experience and it makes you the hotel, the B&B, &B, uh, the home rental that we want. And then the next thing I want you to do is make sure you categorize the experiences by age groups. So you know, like toddlers, two to five, you can kind of put them in the same group. And then young kids, six to eight, kids, eight to 12, and then teens, 13 to 17. And so you could even do pick your season, pick your passion, pick your age groups. And you might say, well, here's an activity that caters to, to parents with toddlers. And here's an activity that caters to young kids from six to eight or eight to 12, or even in their teens. And people will pick and choose the ones they want. And so that's something you can do. Just like in a road Scholar, they did that. They did it by age group. And so whether it's something that will fit the toddlers, and by the way, most things like this, where you have a little toddler there, will also engage the older audiences. But you know what? You might not have the toddlers doing the roller coaster ride. You know, but there's no reason why you can't mix and match these. And so that's something else you need to do is actually categorize them in your itineraries by age group and let them pick and choose. So your itineraries can't be set in stone. You might give them options of things to do. And remember, we have a video that's just how to do itineraries. And then the next one I want to cover is to people want details, 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 details. So for instance, if one of the experiences you're doing is going to learn how to windsurf, 
we want to go to your website and you may say well this is mainly for teens and maybe their parents we don't know how many grandparents are into windsurfing but by the way don't count them out because the oldest ones are 69 but they don't think they're any older than 45 <laughs> generally speaking and i know because i fit in that category sometimes but when you say and when it comes to that windsurfing if i can click on this picture and then you tell us how i learn it and can I rent a board there and where? Remember, most of these people aren't bringing their bikes and all their gear with them because these are experiences they can't do at home. And how long are the lessons? Well, you know, it's maybe two hours each day for the week that you're there. You know, and how much are the rentals and the lessons? When is the best time of year? And what do I need to bring? And, and do you do groups or is it just individuals? And then, you know, do you have a sample windsurfing itinerary? You know, maybe it's stand-up paddle boarding for some of, the, some of the people in your group. And what are the age requirements? And where is the best windsurfing? And by the way, see this list that you're seeing right here? This could apply to anything, whether it's horseback riding or whether it's zip lining or any of those kinds of adventure travel experiences that are in catered to multi-generational. The more details you provide, the more likely you are to close the sale. And you can do the same thing for stand-up paddleboarding, one of the fastest growing trends. And by the way, this is a really cool idea for multi-generational because the grandparents would be in line, the parents would be in line, and absolutely the kids are going to be in line. But here's the thing to remember. The easier you make it, the more likely you are to close the sale. Details, details, details. So, you know... There's a cool thing that I'm going to switch gears now. I could do a whole video just on this. And this has been around for a long time and a few destination marketing organizations are getting it and using it. And that is live chat. So I'm going to take a few minutes and I'm going to talk about having live chat on your website. Now, if you've seen some of my other marketing videos, you know that I say that 45% of your total marketing budget should be on digital. Website, apps, social media, sample itineraries, um, activities guides, which are replacing visitor guides. We have a video just on that. And so live chat is cool. So let me tell you about this. And I'm going to even tell you how much it costs. This is, I'm going to give you a couple of companies. This one here is Live Chat Inc. And by the way, there's their, I put their website in red up there, livechatinc.com. Now, by the way, they charge $16 to $149 per month, depending on the features and how much you use it. But notice down the bottom right hand corner of your screen, it says, We are here, chat now. You know, and here's, I'm going to tell you why this is important in a minute here. And, and so here's uh, Panama City Beach in Florida. This is, they're already doing it. And if you notice right up there at the top, it says live chat. And by the way, if there's nobody there, then it kind of goes away. So it is uh, there when people are planning. And I'm going to talk about that in a second too. But I want to see what they do. So they talk about things to do, places to say, restaurants, beaches, you know, and it says groups, press, weddings, sports, you know, all that stuff. But sometimes live chat can be an easy way. Remember, multi-generational travel is difficult to plan because we're talking a number of people for a number of days and a lot of money. And so their requirements are a little more. And once again, I'm going to say it again, the easier you make it, the more likely you are to close the sale. You know, another a community that's also doing live chat, and they're, by the way, they're using that, um, that organization is Butler County. This is in Ohio, and they do it. And by the way, there it is, live chat right up there. So they're using that. Now, the other one I want to talk about is called LivePerson.com. And using LivePerson is, is pretty cool. And it is free to $18 a month. So I want you to check both of these out because they're pretty cool. To give you an example of who's using LivePerson.com, here you go. Here's Palmetto uh, area. And this is also Anna Maria Island and Longboat Key. This is also in Florida. And if you look down here in this one, they've got Live Chat down there in the bottom. Quite frankly, I believe it should be at the top in the center. I think you should make it a big, bold thing because you know what? People are not calling toll-free numbers now. And another thing I want to talk about with this 
is that most of the travel planning is taking place on weekends and after work. So this may mean you have a volunteer that works on Monday evenings and a volunteer on Tuesday evenings that could just answer questions and maybe even find out what the customer's needs are, the visitor's needs are, and say, you know what, we're going to put something together for you and we will email you tomorrow. And then they can go back to work the next day and get them what they need. But it helps answer questions because you know your destination way better than any visitor does. You know, the Gulf Shores, the Orange Beach, and this whole at the Gulf Shores, they're using chat as well. And as a matter of fact, you know, there it is. Questions, chat with us live. Click here. And it's done by live person. So these are the things you can do. You know, for some of you, you may be using WordPress sites. And WordPress has different widgets that allow. We're big proponents of WordPress. And so in this one here, it's ClickDesk, which is a widget. And by the way, it costs $17 to $68 per year for live chat. That includes the plugin. And notice down there, how may I help you? And you can have your own different icon there. But that's a really cool thing, and that's integrated into a WordPress site. The other one is Zopem, uh, which is also there, and you can see it right there. We're online, help us, and these are widgets. But here's the deal. Once again, they're planning these trips during evening hours and on weekends. You know what? People aren't going to be on a toll-free number or doing a live chat while they're at their desk or at church or at school when they shouldn't be. They might do it during their breaks, but so this is the important thing in tourism. You need to have somebody available, and it doesn't mean it has to be around the clock, but it might be till seven or eight o'clock at night so people after work have a chance to call and answer questions. And maybe it's even two or three days a week. You may say, well, we're going to do it on Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays because, you know, what happens is grandparents are talking to their kids over the weekend and they say, we should do something this summer, this fall. And then Monday, they start working on their planning. And if you're there to answer questions on those days, that would be what I would suggest. And I want to give you a good example. You know, talking about itineraries and really closing the sale, check this out. You know, I got an email from Utah, and granted this is a state, but look at it, experience the arches in three hikey days. You could find more, your three day itinerary, there's day one. Look at, there's day two, wake 90 minutes before dawn. There's day three, check out of your accommodations and end your trip. That was in my email, so you know what I did? I clicked on the full itinerary, it took me to the website. There it is, arches, arches, and more arches. Three days, two nights. Now this is not multi-generational, but if I had somebody I could chat with, it would be awesome. But look at, drive to Moab, there's driving directions, there's your accommodations. Look at how easy they make it. And then they show you pictures, there's double arch windows. So I looked at this website here. There's day one, day two, day three. You know, my first thing that came to mind is we need to get the kids and the grandkids to go do this with us. And you know what was really cool? Look at that. A print friendly itinerary. So I could actually print this out or just download it, send it to my daughter and say, check this out. Would this be a cool three-day itinerary? Maybe we make it five days because we're probably going to stop in Salt Lake or some other areas in Utah. It takes us a day to get there and a day to get home. And you know, when I go there, look at that. It even says, here's Maud Cottage by the Park, Bighorn Lodge, you know. And so now the one thing here is if I could check with somebody about which one is best for the kids and grandkids. Do they have connecting rooms? But you know what? What they did in Utah Tourism is they made it easy to plan a trip. And even though this wasn't specifically catered to multi-generational, it made me and it would make my daughter or son or my other daughter go, wow, we should do this with our kids. And so that's how big this is. And I did mention that all-inclusive packages are big and fast growing. And, you know, that's where they pay, you know, um, $1,500, let's just say. I'm just throwing that out. And that includes four, four hotel rooms uh, for three nights. And it includes a ticket to a water park. See what I mean? Where you can wrap them all together. And if you... 
in all inclusive is really growing for you in the lodging industry where it includes at least breakfast or maybe includes breakfast and dinner and all the rooms but all inclusive is growing and they've been doing it in the caribbean and other places for years and it's finally coming to the united states and canada but start with packaging. Now is the time to start developing packages with lots of options, with pick and choose ideas. You know, and so to give you an example, this works even in the winter where we might go to a ski resort like Whistler, Montremblant, or Vail, or anywhere, you know, Copper Mountain, Stowe in Vermont, you name it, where you include the lodging the dining and all day passes and then you give them some complimentary activities head into town and do this while you're there and you pay one price and you have a little card you carry around that has that package on it and then the restaurant what they do is it, it may all funnel into a destination marketing organization and then go out from there but those are the kinds of things and it works really well with ski resorts or destination resorts like Sun River in Central Oregon. And it can even work with lodging, you know, camps, those kinds of places. And then finally, get started yesterday. It is already here and happening. One thing you need to know is that boomers had their kids in their 20s. Millennials are having their kids in their 30s and early 40s. So there's been this little gap. You know, the oldest boomers are just 69 this year. And their kids are finally having kids that are at T-ball age. And it is going to be a huge wave. In the United States alone, there are 85 million baby boomers. And guess how many millennials there are? about 82 million and they are just creating the next wave so in closing those are the 10 things you need to do you can re-watch this video you can pause it you can discuss ideas you can hand out assignments i would really encourage you to subscribe to our video library it's 45 bucks a month it's netflix for comedians you can watch them anytime anywhere you can stream them to large groups you name it now so here's what i want you to do Number one, start developing a list of truly transformative experiences. Make a list of the experiences. Make sure they're interactive and transformative. Something that the people can't get or do closer to home. And then start crafting itineraries. Start working with your local businesses on developing packages. Even if we have to pay for each one of them individually, if you put together a package it makes it so much easier for us to plan the trip okay and uh, just remember with number one they must be special because these people are spending a lot of money I mean I can tell you from experience that multi-generational trips are in the five to six to seven thousand dollar range each family and that's really important you know, make it easy to find family travel experiences on your website, or you could even call it extended family travel. You know, I'm, I think multi-generational travel ideas is kind of our industry slang, but I think extended family travel or family travel experiences are a good way to pull people. It's like, you know, it's like ecotourism or agritourism. You know, nobody wants an agritourism vacation, but they have no problem doing agritourism itineraries. We just don't want to call it that. And then number four, make sure the pricing is right there. These are expensive and people are money conscious. And then number five, provide an online chat now feature to help people plan their trips. You know, maybe it's just on Saturdays and then on Monday, and maybe it's half a day on Saturday, and then it's Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday evenings, something like that. But do that. And you know, here's something you need to know. The average person planning a vacation like this goes to at least 28 different websites. Did you get that? 28 different websites. They're on TripAdvisor, they're on Yelp, they're on your destination marketing, they're on every single lodging website once they find them on TripAdvisor. Then they're looking at activities and they're going to their websites and they're trying to craft these itineraries. And it takes hours and hours and hours and weeks and weeks of time. The easier you make it, the more likely you are to close the sale. There you go. 
And then finally, start developing videos and photography showing the experiences. Make sure that the grandkids are front and center, but there's no problem and it's great and helpful if you include their parents and grandparents in the photos. Always show people in photos, always have them smiling. And so, this is a trend that is not just a flash in the pan. This will be huge for the next 20 years. This is the beginning of the biggest trend in tourism history, and you need to be a part of it. And this is far more than just Disney. We want to do things that are unique, that are special to you. And so I urge you to get into multi-generational travel and then subscribe to our video library because there are so many other assets there to tell you how to do these itineraries and photography and videography and websites and you name it. So thank you so much and all the best with your multi-generational travel itineraries and planning. I sure wish so-and-so had been here to see Roger. Is that what you thought after seeing Roger's presentation? That's one of the most frequent comments Roger hears. They wish other people in their community had been there to hear this message and advice. After years of preaching to local champions like yourself, Roger is making his presentations available to you so that you can share the enthusiasm and expertise with your entire community. He's created a series of 45-minute to hour-long videos with step-by-step -step instructions, case histories, and examples showing how to make all kinds of great things happen locally. More than two dozen videos cover everything from branding, downtowns, tourism, and community marketing. You can share these videos with your community and other stakeholders to get them on the same page and pulling in the same direction. It's super easy, and here's how you can bring Roger's great ideas to your community. Step 1. You sign up for access to the library. The cost is just $540 for an entire year, and you can make payments of $45 each month. Step 2. You create a login and password that you can share with other local organizations so they can also have access to the video library. The videos are streaming, like Netflix, so they can be watched individually, on a computer or tablet, or they can be projected on a large screen for an audience. Some communities have set up a first Thursday brown bag lunch or other type of gathering. Each month or every couple of weeks, they showcase another video. With each video providing specific things people and businesses can do to increase their sales and local spending, the entire community benefits. You can set up any schedule that works for you. Access is available 24-7, 365 days a year. Step 3. Just access the library, select the video you'd like to show, click play, and you're off and running. You can pause the videos to write down ideas or discuss them in a group setting. You can replay chapters and every video comes with a handout highlighting the key points of the presentation. So share your enthusiasm with your community by subscribing to Roger's Video Library today.